So, hello everybody. I'm Sami Pippuri. I'm the CTO at uh, this company called Mask Global, and uh, it's very nice to build on the previous example. And uh, yeah, so our product is known as WIM. Uh, I think quite a few in this audience probably have heard about us. Maybe some are even using us. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, basically my product. So, which I, I started building three years ago uh, after my CEO asked me this, that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a software engineer, uh, been liking cars from a small boy, and then facing this question that uh, what would it take for me to give up my own car? At the time, I had two BMWs, so it was a, you know, it was a tough call, but uh, now I have zero BMWs. Um, uh, well, that kind of tells you how excited I am to be actually working on this. Um, WIM is the kind of the f first step, if you will, in terms of um, on the path to the, the actual vision that we have, which is the mobility as a service vision, where we create basically a digital alternative for car ownership. So no, it's the car ownership that is the key here, which is uh, it's about you know, spending tens of thousands of uh, dollars or euros on a, on a rapidly depreciating asset that then you park in your driveway and don't drive anywhere. Um, so the promise of mobility as a service is that if we harness all the networks, all the investments that society has made into infrastructure and uh, public transport and, and roads, and uh, you know, taxi ecosystems, etc., and make a digital interface to that. Can we promise the user a similar kind of an SLA that what the car promises? The car that is parked in your driveway, waiting uh, to to serve you at any time, take you anywhere. Now we know, as urban uh, dwellers, that uh, the car has a lot of caveats. It doesn't actually take you anywhere, anytime, because you get stuck in traffic. You have to take it to maintenance. There's insurance. It's just really costly as well. Um, and this is, this is the, the promise of mobility as a service, that uh, if we are able to harness the, the ecosystems around us uh, using intermodal travel, uh, which means basically any mode, any time, that actually makes sense. You know, in urban areas, it's public transport, buses, trams, metros, uh, might be cycling, walking. Uh, and that's really the, the active modes, that, uh, that the sustainable modes that we want to support. Um, but really, really um, move people from riding uh, their personal vehicles into shared modes and uh, working together as a society and, and together with governments as well as the private, private companies to come up with an alternative to the, to the situation, which is basically this, that people are spending on average over 600 euros a month on, a, on this rapidly uh, depreciating asset, which is bulk of all the transportation costs that uh, people end up spending, but it's only used in, in about 4% of the time. So obviously this does not make any sense. Uh, there's, there's more like, you know, feeling uh, to this, that why do people make this kind of an investment, which is a very poor one. That's of course because, you know, people have been listening to, say, car industry, with all the promises about freedom of mobility and so forth for, you know, 100 years. Um, but having run a service like this now for better part of two years, um, starting here in Helsinki, uh, we think that people are now ready uh, for making a change. We're nearing five million trips taking, taken in Helsinki prim primarily. Um, as you saw in the previous presentation, uh, we are expanding now our reach from, from Helsinki. So including if you go to Antwerp, if you go to Amsterdam, check out what WIM has to offer. So it's, it's basically almost up to par already what we have in Helsinki. We're still working on some of the aspects, but um, we're coming from here. So almost 5 million rides, um, city bikes has been really popular. Um, 
we're pretty happy with the amount of downloads, etc. But you know, this is the step one. Uh, we're basically at the kind of the, the base level of what we think is uh, is going to be possible with uh, mobility as a service. So we're talking to about 100, 120 different um, uh, operators throughout the world uh, to essentially come up with a with a global roaming network, just so, just like something that happened in the telecoms industry. It started out very local, uh, and then you had to couple. Um, to, the, to get to the next city, and then couple again to get to the, you know, say the next country, etc. We want to make something similar, an operator that, uh, you know, single operator can serve you basically anywhere in the world and tap into the existing networks in the country, not build a, a new dedicated network that uh, serves only our customers. Um, talking about the societal goals and sort of the environmental goals. Um, this is actual data from our users. So we have demonstrated successfully that users of WIM are more keen on actually using public transportation. They're more keen than, than actual uh, public transport subscribers in Helsinki using our app. Um, but also they're keen on using sustainable modes, um, active modes, walking, cycling, using, using shared mass transit. So this proves that once you make public transport really accessible, single click, no questions asked, uh, no pay as you go, is really the subscription that we believe in, it promotes the usage of these modes. Now, as the CTO, uh, the previous stuff that you saw was basically kind of my, my CEO's role. He goes around the world, you know, talking in two thousands of, uh, of presentations and uh, promises things. And then it's like, okay, over to you, Sami. Now go and implement. Um, that's not always easy. And, uh, you know, transportation has been around for quite a while. It's, uh, you know, maybe not the most IT savvy industry in the world today. Um, but, um, it's changing, obviously. Transportation is in a change uh, state at the moment, which is going to probably take a few years still, but uh, it will be looking very different in, say, you know, in a decade's time. Um, so right now there's a lot of silos, um, which some are really open to actually breaking up and uh, collaborating. Some are still sticking, sticking into that, their own. Um, but if you think about how this could evolve, so of course, there's the option that um, everybody just goes and builds their own. And, uh, you know, WIM has their own dedicated fleets as well as Ubers, etc. And uh, this idea is very popular, say, in the West Coast US, that uh, there can only be one winner in this and they will end up owning everything. Uh, then there is the perhaps more of a European point of view that everything should be publicly run and should be relying on, uh, uh, you know, dedicated. Uh, uh, providers and trusted providers which are publicly funded. Um, we kind of tend to believe that this should be an open market. Uh, there should be a mobility market and there should, be, there should be several operators. We certainly don't think that we will be alone on the, on the operator side and we shouldn't be. This, that would not be an, a competitive market that is able to actually take the fight back to the, to the car dealers and car uh, manufacturers because they will spend a lot of money on marketing and marketing the freedom uh, that the car provides. And so this is not about us versus them in terms of the transport sector, the, the public transport versus uh, private mass transit or, or mass operators. It's really about putting it all together and uh, taking the fight to the car ownership, uh, which, like I said, does not make any sense. So. I believe, and we believe, that uh, powered by APIs, this kind of an open ecosystem can actually improve the, the uh, in the end, finances of everybody involved, because that, that's the only way how, say, if you own a fleet of cars, how do you maximize your, your utilization is by not just locking your fleet into a single app. Uh, you, should be, you should be opening up as many sales channels as possible, and that is powered by APIs. So I showed this picture, but I think what really underlines it should be open API-based ecosystem. That's really the starting point of everything. 
Taking a little bit deeper look, um, well, there's the existing transport sector, which, which is, you know, has a lot of, lot of data that is, is available uh, to be refined. The actual services, the actual, uh, you know, bus lines and uh, tram lines, etc. There's a lot of different payment schemes, how you access the network. And there is a lot of existing systems vendors um, providing ticketing systems and route planning and so forth. Um, what I would propose that there's going to be perhaps a new layer or two. Uh, there's room for, for many more, um, which is, again, going to be a competitive marketplace. There's not just going to be one vendor for these things. There will be more regional vendors. There will be some overlaps. Uh, there will be global vendors for things like data aggregation. We just think to, talk to one, as well as aggregating different services across regions, um, processing payments across regions. And, uh, well, systems vendors will be around in that too, as well as doing consult consultancy, etc. It's a perfectly valid B2B business, reselling uh, services throughout the world. And then there's going to be this operator layer, similar, like telecoms. There can be virtual operators that don't have their network. There will be uh, more physical operators which have their own network. The important thing is that by running your own network, you should be open to also let others do visits in your network. This is actually my job interview uh, when my CEO was first, first he asked me that how, could, how would I give up my car. Uh, then his second question was that, okay, well, we want to build this thing that uh, is going to have to integrate, you know, thousands of different uh, providers throughout, or transport operators throughout the world. How would you go and build it? And uh, it was clear from the get-go that uh, this will have to be, of course, cloud-native service. Uh, it's going to be API-driven. Has, has got to be um, mobile app based in terms of the actual service delivery. Um, but those are not like mutually exclusive. So while you have apps, you should have a proper API with, where others can connect to, as well as you don't have to do everything yourself. Uh, there's, of course, the transport operators that we have to, have to plug in. It has to be really flexible for doing that. But things like routing, um, there's no way that a small startup from Finland can out-invest uh, big companies in this area. So let's not, let's not bother. Let's just get routing as a service. And uh, um, that goes to, without saying on, on financial side as well. That's, it takes a lot of capital, et cetera, to be in, in financial services. So let's not do it. Let's just plug in through APIs. So our focus from the get-go has really been on the customer experience, being able to service customers and uh, come up with uh, different kinds of pricing packaging for, for the actual mobility services that are delivered using the network. So we're not owning any cars. We're just plugging through the existing network. Now, it all sounds very good on slides, but uh, you know, my, my life has been you know, feeling like this lately. So I've been sort of look, looking at, uh, you know, pegs and round holes and, and so forth, and uh, squeezing different options to be, you know, roughly looking the same from, from provider to another to make a harmonious user experience to the end user. You know, I think we've done a decent job on this, um, but, uh, you know, there's still some work to be done. Um, usually when we talk to partners to be, uh, there's two tracks. There's the business track, there's the technical track both of which sometimes have their own blockages. Um, in most cases, it is, it is the business track that is you know, either really uh, like driving the whole thing or really blocking the thing. Um, and they typically boil down to one thing, which is like who owns the customer. Well, I have, it's my, I have some op opinions on whether you actually can own a customer, but that's basically the fear uh, that, that stems from you know, not being able to control everything. And that's really the challenge in the API economy, that uh, you have to kind of let go of something to get more. And uh, making that jump for many, many times traditional companies that we're talking to is a, is a bit of a challenge. It just takes time. Usually companies work through this cycle uh, in a similar fashion, uh, but the, the working through the cycle time kind of varies. Some make it very quickly, and, uh, and then some just take a long time for, for processing it. On the technical side, 
Of course, there's a, there's a lot of legacy in place. There might not be APIs that were built originally. It was just not meant to be open. Uh, so in that case, some development may be required. But there's a lot of, lot of ways that we can work around. Um, but yeah, so there's, while there's a lot of standards in transportation per se, but fixing the kind of the peg into or square peg into the round hole, the, the kind of the getting actual people moving, that has been the kind of the, the missing piece. Um, so, well, on the on the business side, um, there are some tools that we can we can work through. Um, with the, with the partner. So for example, when it comes to data, that's kind of the number one thing that, uh, that uh, companies are asking for, that will they lose visibility into their customership? And uh, well, our answer is that we, we will provide the necessary data that, uh, that is required for operating the service. And that's, that's perfectly fine for, for also GDPR point of view and so forth. Um, then, uh, you know, the, the other question is that, uh, okay, why should I let you book my, my uh, fleet? Well, you know, we just want to be an extra sales channel. It's not taking away anything. We just want to bring more. Um, then, you know, the customer relationship, you know, has to, has to do with brand and so forth. Um, but it's really about reinsuring partners to make that leap of faith that, yes, API economy means that you will letting somebody else uh, basically walk in through the kitchen, but in the end you will actually benefit. You, will, you don't have to do everything on this. Uh, let, me, let us help you get more customers. Let us help you serve the customership better by understanding how the network actually works best door to door, not just uh, ticket machine to, t to ticket machine or ticket to gate. Um, and then when it comes to the actual technical integration, um, there was no standard for the, say, the booking systems of the world. Uh, so, yeah, we created one uh, to get, get things going. For us to launch the service, um, we typically need uh, public transport. It's really the mass uh, or the kind of the, the cornerstone of mobility service, but also taxi-like services, somewhere, some, something that uh, somebody else is doing the driving for you. And as a catch-all access to car that you drive yourself. There could be you know, a bunch of other modes. Of course, the more urban areas, the more modes that we actually want. Um, but uh, this is really it, that um, you know, taxi usually is not a problem. Uh, getting public transport can be a bit of a slow process. There might be hurdles, like technical hurdles, that there's gates that we can't open with mobile apps. Um, Car rental is usually not a problem. It's a robust uh, existing API-driven economy already. Um, so I mentioned mobile tickets. So yeah, mo that is really the, you know, we are, we are a digital service. We're not sending people any travel cards. So the doors have to open with a mobile phone. That's the hard, hard line that we have drawn. But it's also the machine-to-machine -machine APIs that uh, is really key for the user experience. You don't want to be facing tens of different registration flows when, when booking a longer journey. You, you want one app to actually take that, take that you know, care of that for you. So in this, I think the Finnish uh, legislation about this uh, act on behalf of Puolesta Asiointi as the, as the transport code uh, uh, is known for, um, that is really a key, and it's, uh, I think you know, I'm really applauding Finland for leading the way in this one. It really makes a big difference in, in terms of the, the user experience that we are able to provide. Um, so it supports this notion where uh, we collect one payment from the user and then allocate that um, between the different companies. So they, the companies participating get compensated for their efforts as, as if you know, people were, were traveling with them anyway. So they're not losing in this. A um, couple of cases. So taxis, uh, like I said, are usually not really difficult in terms of the technical integration. Um, here's, I'm not naming any names, but uh, something very local here. Um, I think they're pretty happy with our collaboration. We made it very easy for them. We just used their, their existing API that is behind their app. 
Uh, so, you know, usually if there's an app, there's an API, and we can just use it, and they don't, they originally didn't even know we're there. We just used, the, used their API. Well, they did know that we were there, but uh, technically they didn't. Um, so we just used their corporate account, call taxis, they, they send us a bill, everything works pretty, you know, seamlessly. Um, another case was, uh, was a West Midlands uh, bus operator. They had a mobile app, but it was closed. There was no API. There was an SDK that was closed, no API, uh, third-party API. Um, so, well, we kind of made a quick workaround where we just created a kind of, a, well, we kind of it, uh, unintentionally uh, ended up creating a ticketing system uh, for them. But, uh, you know, we're not in ticketing you know, business, but, uh, you know, we created one as a, as a workaround. And it's, it's there. It works in, in the West Midlands area today. Um, but we learned while doing this, and uh, this actually served as a nice baseline for what we suggested that how HSL could improve their, their own ticketing. And, well, I'm pretty happy with the end result. So now technically the, the new open mass based API from HSL is a very open standards-based one. And uh, we couldn't have known uh, what to ask if, the, if we hadn't gone through this exercise. And maybe on the other side, we have a national rail operator who, despite the law being in effect, hasn't opened the API, even though one exists. And I'm a little bit sad because, you know, it's kind of blocking people access for this kind of a national investment. And, uh, you know, they, they're not participating in any MOS because they think that they were doing it themselves. So a little sad for the, for the partner there. Um, but uh, maybe starting to conclude this one. So um, in there, I showed the layers of mobility as a service, um, where I believe that there will be several renders, not just one per layer. Yeah. But really what drives the, the adoption, the, the actual access to services with users, is to be opening up the business of, of mobility. Uh, data is, of course, great. You know that when the bus is arriving, etc. But it doesn't really help you if you don't have the means of actually boarding the bus or tram or metro. So, getting the aggregations on the on the actual service bookings, the the ticketing, etc. That's really key for for widespread adoption of mobility as a service. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's basically a risk that uh, there will be somebody with uh, kind of the full stack approach and uh, just you know, runs over. Um, so you got to open up or, or this will not happen. Uh, so I mentioned that we, there was no standard, so we created one. So this one is it's just a very quick, quick, simple API, five methods uh, published in GitHub, MIT license. Um, anybody can take it and uh, implement in their ticketing system. This is exactly what we use as a as means to plug new services into WIM today. Uh, so if there was just happened to be an implementation of this somewhere in the inter internet, we could just immediately start using it. So I think that it's a business opportunity for also software vendors and uh, system providers. And maybe to highlight the kind of the opportunities that uh, Mass Alliance is uh, actually taking over this project to make it a more industry-wide. So it's not just WIM, it's going to be a you know, bigger, bigger project. So in summary, with Moss, what we, are, we want to be fighting against is the model of ownership of cars, of other kind of uh, expensive transport gear that uh, people underutilize anyway. Um, we need APIs. APIs really drive the innovation, the adoption of services, as well as enable providers to actually rationalize their, their um, services as well. Um, and it's just it can't be just about the data. It has to be the business layer as well. So, you know, I've said that I want to get butts in seats of those, of those transport methods, and that's, that's really key. Um, because, well, what we believe in is that market will win. You can hold out for a while, but this is kind of going to happen anyway, whether it's us or somebody else. Uh, but this market is going to change, and, uh, you know, now is the time to actually start opening up and uh, um, start actually exploring the, the possibilities that uh, this API economy can, can bring. So yeah, I think that's, 
the main message that I wanted to convey today. Thank you.